This is the Surge V2. And in this video, we're gonna be tearing it down to see what's inside of it. And this will help you disassemble it and put it back together if you ever need to make any repairs on it inside. The Surge V2 is also sometimes known as the 1.6. It's the third version of the Surge. So there was the 1.0, which had a rubber tip on it to adjust the velocity. There was the 1.5, which had a slider under the fins to adjust the velocity, and this one doesn't. Then there was the 1.6, which is this one, which also got renamed to the V2. The current latest version that Gel Blaster is selling is the V3, which really only has packaging differences, and it comes with a preloaded hopper. So let's open it up to see what's inside. First, you gotta remove all the external accessories like the fins and the hopper feed neck, and then you have to undo all these screws. And to undo these screws, you're gonna use a small number zero or number one Phillips head screwdriver. Once all the screws are loose, you can carefully lift the side up that has the screws in it. Watch out the trigger that's got a spring on it. It's gonna jump out. It looks like all the electronics are stuck to this other side. I'm gonna flip this over and dump out all the screws. So it looks like Gel Blaster has changed from a lithium polymer battery in the original blaster to a cylindrical lithium ion battery. These cylindrical lithium ion batteries are much less prone to causing fire issues than lithium polymer batteries are. But if you overcharge this, it can still burst and start a fire. Some things to really pay close attention to when you go to put this blaster on is that all these cables are routed the same way. They're not above any of the screw bosses, like these cables right here are passing through these channels. They're down below, it's going through the channel here. It's on the top of this pin boss hole here, which is used for aligning the, the housing. And it, the routing is clean. This should probably go through here like this. So you wanna make sure all your wires are back in the same place where they were when you opened it. And here, even this one should probably go down here. It looks like they made some spaces for the wires to go in here, but none of the wires are in there right now. All the switches in this position here. The trigger switch, it needs to go over these little pins. So there's holes in the trigger switch. It doesn't need to go over the little pins like that. The wire needs to go up here, over the motor, down, off to the side. So everything needs to be clean and good like that. Otherwise, if you go to put the housing back on, you're going to pinch some cables and stuff is going to get messed up. So in theory, this should be a pretty easy battery to replace, except that it has a very long wire in order to get down here. That's an unusually long wire. So you'd probably have to cut the wires and reconnect them to the battery closer to the battery or extend the battery wires with the battery that you replace it with. This gearbox looks very similar to the original Gel Blaster gearbox. There are some minor differences that are visible from the outside, like this up here, this is something new here. It's attached to the piston and it would come back and hit a switch back here so it would sense every time that it's fired. So that will be useful for single fire mode. However, this is not using this switch and it does have a single fire mode. So what I suspect is that they're using motor current for the single fire mode or they're just turning the motor on for a specific amount of time and hoping that the shot gets fired every single time. And that might be the case because I do remember that sometimes when you pull the trigger, you might get two shots. So they leave it on just long enough that you at least get one shot and then sometimes it might kind of cycle where it gets two shots out. So another change that they made are these interchangeable barrels here. So this one, you can unscrew the barrel and then screw in another barrel in there. So that's a difference also. This is an M1911 gearbox. And this gearbox is pretty much a direct replacement for the first generation Gel Blaster Surge. But for this one, you could use this gearbox as a replacement for this gearbox, but the barrel is different on this version of the Surge. And somehow they were able to achieve 170 FPS with this configuration of the gearbox versus typically these STD1911 gearboxes only achieve about 150 FPS. Now I'm gonna remove the circuit board and take a look at it on from both sides. So the circuit board has a decent amount of electronics on it, 
so it's got to have a charging circuit for the battery. It also controls the motor, so it's got a MOSFET for the motor because the micro switch is just going into the circuit board. And that's good because then you're not running power through the micro switch, so the micro switch is not going to go bad. Versus this design for the M1911 where it's just the power is just going through the micro switch. So the battery is connected directly to the circuit board. It's not connected through the switch. There are large power cables running to the switch. And then there are three wires here going to the switch, which those are the selection wires for single fire or full auto. So it looks like for single fire, the circuit board is directly controlling the motor. So for some reason, when full auto mode, these two wires get connected together and it also powers these front contacts up here, which there's still no accessory for that I know of. Unfortunately, the connector for this battery does not have the same spacing as the standard gel blaster chargers. So I can't just plug this battery into that charging port. While we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the gearbox and see if there's anything different inside the gearbox from before. Yep, expect some stuff to pop out strongly. So all the internal components in here look the same as the version 1.0 that I took apart. The only difference I'm noticing is that the spring is different. The spring has a larger wire diameter and it has a longer length. So this stronger spring results in the higher FPS, but really nothing else looks changed in there. So if you could get this stronger spring and put it inside of a M1911 gearbox, then you could achieve similar FPS with it. One thing I wanted to take a look at was uh, the diameter, the, the specs of the spring. So the spring has a 1.09 millimeter diameter wire. And so the diameter of this wire in the V2 is 1.12, 1.11. So the diameter of the wire is a little bit bigger. So if we look at the overall length of this spring, 87.6 versus 73.8 for the original version. So the spring is longer. And that's done by adding an extra coil. So here, if we start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's one extra coil on this also compared to the other spring. Other than that, the gearbox is the same. So if you want to see the full details and measurements and stuff of this gearbox, go back to my original Gel Blaster Surge teardown video where I go through all the details of this gearbox and show how it works and how to put it back together.